in this session, what we are going to cover is what is the definition of agile. We are going to have a comparison of few uh, state of agile surveys from version one's website. And uh, after that comparison, we will come to know that why agile is prevailing in the industry and what others people who are actually implementing and transforming them from traditional waterfall model or SDLC or any other method that they are implementing previously when they are moving from that mode to agile implementation what kind of challenging or what kind of causes they are sharing with us why agile have become so popular in the industry so let's get started if you see and go uh, the dictionary definition of agile you will find able to move quickly and easily this is the uh, general definition of word agile but the interesting part is that there is another definition that has been added and i'm going to read the definition which is related to us related to this course which means that relating to or denoting a method of project management used especially for the software development that is categorized by the division of tasks into short phases of work and frequent reassessment and adaptation of the plan. So there are a few interesting words if you see uh, that, that says that division of the task that is into shorter phases and there's a frequent reassessment and adaptation of the plan. So these different words have very significant meanings in Agile, which we are going to cover in the subsequent lesson. But for today, what we are going to understand is that if we are implementing any one of the Agile method, there is a division of tasks that is happening. There is a shorter duration cycle that we are going to use. There is a frequent reassessment, which we can call feedback cycle and because there is a change that is happening within the process so there is the adaptation of the plan uh, because of those changes so this is what dictionary definition of agile see agile software development definition mean to us so if we read this definition it says that it is an iterative and incremental evolutionary approach to software development which is performed in a highly collaborative manner by a self-organizing team within an effective governance framework with just enough ceremony that produce high quality solution in a cost effective and timely manner which meets the changing need of stakeholders definition of agile we will find different words right one is iterative one is incremental approach for software development that is performed in a highly collaborative manner by self-organizing team within an epic governance framework just as a ceremony which is now known as event that produce high quality solution in a cost effective and timely manner which meet the changing need of the stakeholder so what is happening in agile software development that it is iterative and incremental which what is the meaning of iterative and incremental we will discuss it in detail but iterative means that you are doing it again and again and incremental means you are adding bit chunk of working software every time you are getting something okay and this approach of the development which is performed by highly collaborative manner when i say collaboration there is the collaboration that is happening within the different stakeholders that are involved in the development of the software by self-organizing team so uh, if you go further we will read that there are self-organizing team there are self-directing team and there are self-managing team we will see what is the difference between self-organizing self-directing self-managing but let's concentrate on self-organizing team what does it mean it means that team is organized organizing themselves and team takes certain decisions that are required to be taken for the development of the software. So once, once external authority or senior management give project to this team who is going to work on the agile, uh, agile development, they are organizing themselves once the project reach to them and they decide that how and what is the going to be delivery date, how it is going to be uh, done, uh, of course, with these certain processes that are in place for agile development, but they are organizing themselves in an effective manner. And because they are organizing themselves, there are there is a certain framework that is being used for organizing team. 
and there are certain processes or even to ceremonies which were used which is being used for these by these self organizing team which will result into high quality solution which is cost effective obviously in a time and manner and with a changing need of software uh, changing need of the stakeholders right <clears throat> so in simple term iterative incremental collaboration self organizing there is a effective go governance framework there as ceremonies uh, involved into it which will produce high quality solution which is cost effective it is timely manner and also meet the changing need of the stakeholder so this is what the definite agile software so what i'm going to cover now is the version 1 agile result and this version 1 agile result was a little old that is in 2009 but uh, there are interesting result when the so, uh, agile was becoming very buzzword in the industry and that is the reason is these results came out which says that the product delivery was increased by 62% the huge huge uh, increase in the delivery of the project and it is believed that only 33% of the software development life cycle project were delivered successfully but there is either they are over shoot in the budget or they are over in the schedule that has been formed at the initial stage so it enhances ability to manage the changing priorities like we discussed in the previous slide the major uh, problem in the traditional waterfall model is that it cannot accommodate the changing priority but 50% 56% of the results say that agile methodology is able to cater the changing requirement or priorities increase the productivity to 55% this is this is also an amazing result to increase in the productivity of 55% people think that there is an increase in the productivity of the uh, team or productivity of the project enhance software quality that is 47% so similarly uh, there are few result we will just go through to few more and rest of the things you can you know just read through these things so the next is enhanced delivery product predictability and uh, we will see that there is a n number of planning that is required you know, if you go for extreme programming or we go for scrum method we will find that there is a a uh, different level of uh, planning that has happened because of that delivery become more predictable improve business and aligning alignment yes because there is a lot of uh, collaboration happening between these two people so there, there is there is increase 44% increase in the alignment of the it and the business improve the product project visibility and i think uh, these two are a little bit related because on the one side uh, you are having a delivery productivity and because of these productivities of deliveries you are also having a visibility of the project yes project risk are reduced by 40% and improve team morale that is 29% and engineering practices 24% project cost to 22 23% increase software maintainability maintainability 22% the better managed distributed team to 21% and this is the 10th state of agile survey uh, why so these are the interesting results let you see the top two reason for adopting agile for last 3 years have been accelerated product delivery that is 62% and enhance their ability to manage the changing rights 6% so these are the two reason because of that the agile become popular you know it become a buzzword in the industry because of these survey results and these results really create a sort of wave within the uh, in industry so that people can move from traditional model to agile software development so this is 2010 version result and if we see this result if you if you just do a comparison of these two result you will find now the product delivery has been key for 69% and the changing priorities is by 60 1% and this was 62 and 53% in the previous slide the productivity of the software people think they increased by 53% visibility by 43 43 by software quality and alignment right so overall uh, that reason remains same but here if you see it says the improved project visibility that is 43% moved up three places to become the fourth most popular reason stated for agile software this year and accelerating product delivery increased by 62 last year 69 this year and also 62 to 69 so if you see within one year what is happening here is that uh, the productivity uh, the product delivery has been increased from 62 to 69% which is amazing so these amazing results surveys uh, tell us that why and what is the reason uh, that agile software development become so popular in the industry so so as go forward 
so in 1992 the first method that was being introduced is the crystal method and the crystal method was used uh, by alistair coburn and we will discuss the detail later slide for all the methods okay so today what we are going to cover is the air wise and who have introduced this method into the industry so in 1993 bill was the one who come up with the refactoring concept where it says that when there is a more technical debt that has been accumulated by the team team should go for refactoring otherwise the technical debt will increase and in future it become a problem for the organization in 1994 uh, there is another method that is dynamic system development method that has been introduced by Jennifer Staplion and she was the one along with the other members who were also involved into it but the Jennifer Staplion is the one who have introduced dynamic system development method in 1994 In 1995, Scrum and Peer development was introduced by Jeff Sutherland and Ken Shaver. So these are the two uh, popular person uh, in the industry now. It is because Jeff Sutherland have formed the the Scrum Alliance and the Ken Shaver have uh, introduced the Scrum dot org. So these two organization are different organization now. But in 1995, these two person together introduced Scrum and the Peer development. Then in 1995, uh, though the peer development was introduced, also introduced by Jeff Sutherland and Ken Shaver, but uh, Jim Copian is also the one in 1995 who also involved in the peer development uh, method. So peer development method is the one where two people sit together and one is writing the code and one is constantly in every line trying to analyze what the other person is thinking, and in they in in this way they are doing the peer development. In 1997 feature driven development was introduced and uh, what they said is that every every uh, functionality that is being used within a project should be done in a small uh, 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 small uh, uh, chunk of work and this chunk of work can be known as uh, feature and it was introduced by jeff degluca peter cot and john kern so these are the three person who have introduced the feature driven development to us after that if we move forward in 1999 there was a, a system development was introduced by uh, zim high smith and the zim high smith is the one who introduced uh, uh, this adaptive software development in 1999 to us when we move further we will see uh, in 1999 again uh, there was a new methodology that has been introduced by uh, ken back uh, in which is known as extreme programming and the abbreviation is xp for it and um, it is said that uh, extreme programming was also used by the nasa and uh, because they also come up with uh, another development of software because they think that the longer project are not very successful with the software development life cycle so they also come up with the extreme programming concept in the late industry late in the industry after that in 2001 uh, the agile manifesto was written and in the agile manifesto there are four values and 12 principle that have been introduced we will read those values and principles later in the subsequent session and uh, there was 17 people who was involved in the uh, creation of the agile manifesto so they they in a sort of conference they all come together i came together and uh, they started discussing that how we should be doing the development because all the development which was introduced from 1992 till the time 2001 they had some problem or the other problem so what they did is they have taken the best practices and all the person who was involved in crystal matter refactoring dsdm scrum and peer development peer development ftd asd extreme programming they all came together and written the agile manifesto for us after the agile manifesto was written there are few methodology that become very popular one is the kanban one is the uh, scrum and obviously the extreme programming engineering practices were very uh, significant uh, play a very significant role in the uh, development of the process and then 
in 2002 uh, i think uh, the same uh, uh, kent back uh, introduced uh, uh, tdd that is test driven development so it is a way of how testing should be driven and the, how the project should be uh, developed by introducing automated test cases and in every sprint there should be a complete cycle where we would test the entire project depending upon the impact analysis so this was the evolution of agile that has happened from 1992 to 2002 and all the person involved the specific was Alistair Coburn, Bill Zenifer Steplion, Ziff Sutherland, Ken Shiver, Zen Coplin, Jeff Tulukar, Peter Cord, Jen Kern and Ken Pack along with the 17 other things, 17 thinkers, a few of them are involved and there are a few more persons which we will cover in the Agile Manifesto for us. So this is the evolution of the Agile and uh, this is the end of this session. Hello everyone, this is Peter and I'm your instructor for Agile Project Man Management uh, course. Today we are covering uh, module one and the topic we're going to cover is the what is waterfall model. Though I assume that most of, most of you have already worked in a waterfall model, if not, uh, we are going to cover few of the aspect of waterfall model for those who have already worked in the waterfall model for them it is just a revision of what kind of challenges they have faced during the waterfall model though in the previous module one topic what is agile we have covered various uh, reason for the failure of the waterfall model and also we have covered what are the various reasons for the success of waterfall uh, for agile model and the failure of the agile model. So in this topic, because it primarily concerned with the waterfall model, I'm going to cover what exactly happened in waterfall model and what is waterfall model. This waterfall model has been uh, developed by Vincent Roy and he is the person who went to one conference where he wanted to tell the people that how the the development being done in the various aspect of software technology but uh, i read somewhere that it is also mentioned uh, in one of the conferences i have attended that vincent royce went just to tell the people that there is way that is the waterfall way is not the right way of developing uh, the software project but people liked it so much they started implementing waterfall model so now what is happening in the waterfall model let's see so waterfall model is divided into multiple phases starting from requirement then it goes to design then development thing and then finally it moves to mount, uh, maintenance mode so now these are the uh, initial phases that is how the overall project is spanned in, in a particular duration and you complete the one phase for example you are working in a requirement phase until the requirement phase is free you will not move to the next phase so that is the one aspect of waterfall model so one design is complete you will only then move to the development similarly once all the development is completed you will move to testing phase and once testing completed and the sign off of the project is given and it moves to the maintenance mode so because we are going to spend certain time at a particular stage that is also one of the disadvantage of waterfall hello everyone this is peter and i'm your instructor for agile project Man management course today we are covering uh, module one and the topic we're going to cover as the what is waterfall model though i assume that most of most of you have already worked in a waterfall model if not uh, we are going to cover few of the aspect of waterfall model for those who have already worked in the waterfall model for them it is just a revision of what kind of challenges they have faced during the waterfall model though in the previous module one topic what is agile we have covered various uh, reason for the failure of the waterfall model and also we have covered what are the various reasons for the success of waterfall uh, for agile model and the failure of the agile model so in this topic because it primarily concerned with the waterfall model i'm going to cover what exactly happened in waterfall model and what is waterfall model this waterfall model has been uh, developed by vincent roy 
and he is the person who went to one conference where he wanted to tell the people that how the the development being done in the various aspect of software technology but uh, i read somewhere that it is also mentioned uh, in one of the conferences i have attended that vincent royce went just to tell the people that there is way that is the waterfall way is not the right way of developing uh, the software project but people liked it so much they started implementing waterfall model so now what is happening in the waterfall model let's see so waterfall model is divided into multiple phases starting from requirement then it goes to design then development thing and then finally it moved to mon uh, maintenance mode so now these are the uh, initial phases that is how the overall project is span in, in a particular duration and you complete the one phase for example you are working in a requirement phase until the requirement phase is free you will not move to the next phase so that is the one aspect of waterfall model so one design is complete you will only then move to the development similarly once all the development is completed you will move to testing phase and once testing completed and the sign off of the project is given and it move to the maintenance mode so because we are going to spend certain time at a particular stage that is also one of the disadvantage of waterfall and let's try to understand with an example a very small and brief example how the waterfall model get executed in 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 a small duration of time and how a agile project is being executed so <clears throat> let's take one example here small example to make a small difference he said there are in in sdlc that is a waterfall model so it is divided into say suppose one requirement phase one is say suppose design then coding then testing then take an example that this project is span for one year which means two to three months we are going to spend here say one month in design this is just the rough estimate just for the sake of understanding five month we are going to spend in coding five six seven eight nine and approximately two months we are going to spend in the testing phase now say suppose once the requirement is freeze uh, like like discuss that once this phase is complete we will move to this phase once this complete is complete then then this but how it is going to happen in a agile model a little brief i'm going to cover so that you can have a comparison that what is happening in this phase if you see the value that is going to happen or the value we are going to get at the end of the project is once it is delivered in the testing phase so now what happened in agile environment so whole project is divided into multiple small cycles so let's suppose there's two months Two, one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now let's see what is going to happen in this two month cycle. Let's suppose. So within this two month, I'm just taking a hypothetical example. So it is much more deeper than that, but it is just for the understanding. So let's segregate this two month into multiple weeks. So let's suppose this is a two week cycle. So two, two week here, two week here. So this is in month. I'm just giving an brief. and this is in week so what is happening here so two months it means for two months it is 2 4 and so the two months are divided into 6 6 8 8 so now what is happening here so happening here is that we took say suppose 1 2 3 requirement which is generally known as user stories and these stories are going to be complete in this two weeks let's suppose these three are done and say suppose we are developing a small website which this website is having a two box for user id and password and there is a button which you going to test with the database that whether the user id and password exists and finally there is a landing page now what is happening here if you go here and if we have to make this website in this phase so for 2 to 3 months we are going to have the requirement gathering of this complete project but what is going to happen in agile project in first two week let's suppose we have created these text box with no functionality but we have created this uh, this this one span so when we are still gathering requirement 
in in our SDLC cycle, we are going to develop something in this two way. Similarly, we are going to add little more functionality within this requirement phase where there's only three months or two months of requirement gathering that is happening here. In this two months, we are going to give some working software to the customer. So the value that is we are getting at the end of one year in any SDLC cycle, this value we are going to cover in say suppose two month some value not the exact value but the some value we are going to get in the initial phase of the agile cycle so this is a very brief i'm not uh, taking this example in terms of dollar value but if you see if we are delivering some value here and if we convert it into dollars it will benefit we are going to give to our customer in terms of the working software hello everyone uh this is peter and i'm going to cover the topic and today agile project management course module one and the topic is myths of agile so far we have seen that there are a, there are too many benefit and too too many uh, disadvantages advantages uh, of agile in the industry but there are certain myths that also exist within the industry because a lot of people have worked so far a lot of organization have worked so far in agile so i'm going to cover few of the uh, myths of agile and it is important to learn why these myths these are myths and these are not the truth because whenever you work on the transformation whenever you start learning agile you should know that what is right and what is wrong about any methodology that exists within the organization so by the end of this session we are going to have few myths which you know that these are the myths and uh, you know that what is opposite to these myths that exist within the uh, industry so let's look forward and um, the first and foremost uh, myth that exists which is not true agile is not a silver bullet so what you can opt is that you can opt to fail faster in agile project due to transparency but it is not so but why we say fail fast in agile because uh, there is shorter duration of the cycle and the shorter duration of the cycle gave us the opportunity to fail and because the feedback that is given in a shorter cycle is more important to us and once we get the feedback uh, we would be in a position to take a decision based on the feedback so let's suppose that uh, you are executing one project of three months and you are saying that you are going to have two cycle of one and a half month and one and a half month which means that you are going to get to feedback in three months from the customer which means that this is this is a very long period to get the feedback and implement those feedback within the project and let's suppose now you change your strategy and you say that you need a two week sprint which means that you are going to get almost four feedback after every two week so which means that there is a much much better possibility of getting the right feedback second myth that exists is agile is anti documentation so yes agile is not anti documentation you can choose how you can minimize the documentation by creating a task and use to reduce documentation work so uh, the next is agile is anti planning i am not sure from where people have created this myth uh, that agile is anti planning in fact when you go in subsequent slide or when you start implementing agile there is multiple level of planning that exists within the sprint or within the project to make sure that everything is in place so for example uh, if i am executing one project of 6 month and i'm planning two releases say suppose uh, after every 3 month i'm going to plan a release so i am going to have one planning at release level i am going to have one planning in each sprint say suppose uh, i have a duration of sprint 2 week which means i am approximately going to have 12 planning meeting plus 113 that is a release planning meeting if i go further down in every spent daily i'm going to have a daily stand up meeting which it is still a planning meeting that so what i'm going to do today and what i have done yesterday and what i'm going to uh, am i going to face any am i facing any uh, blocker within the within within the what i have executed uh, in yesterday or today so there are multiple level of planning that exists so i don't know how people have created this myth that agile is and deep planning so uh, let's go further there is agile is 
anti discipline even i don't know how uh, this myth have comes uh, into picture that agile is uh, undisciplined so agile is more disciplined due to the much multiple activity than the regular interval regular retrospective meeting regular shipping the software time boxing of each and every activity to be uh, maybe it is stand up meeting maybe it is planning maybe it is retro so uh, if if i say i am executing a sprint of two week so so the planning meeting is going to be for one hour that is time box sprint uh, daily stand up meeting going to be one hour the demo is going to be for one hour time time boxing each and every meeting so that uh, it works in a very disciplined manner again agile is not undisciplined but it is more disciplined in my um, observation uh, agile required a lot of rework then why this myth come into picture is that say suppose you are executing a sprint wise uh, project and when you have something uh, some changing requir- requirement that comes in between you have an opportunity to rework only for one sprint not the entire sprint you have worked so far uh, previously so so there is only a rework of one sprint but if you go in any other model you will see that there is a lot of rework happen because of the changing requirement and say suppose if, if the stakeholder come for the demo and they say that you know the thing which you have implemented in this project that need not to be implemented and we need something else so now the things that has been implemented in one sprint that is going to cause the rework and that is why we the agile comes into the picture because they can we would be in a position to cater the changing requirement next comes is uh, agile as anti architecture um, agile believes in building things more simple rather than ad- adding complexity unnecessary moreover we Uh, when we learn about more agile principle we have one principle that is simplicity that art of maximizing the work not being done so uh, it is not anti architecture it says that uh, the architecture evolved during uh, over the period of time or i would say architecture uh, should be uh, created in such a manner it would be in a position to accommodate much changes that we see progressively in our project so it is not anti architecture but architecture should be planned in a better manner that what is said so agile does not scale um, it again is a myth that scaling option exists in agile uh, when multiple teams are working together we have sos meeting we have scrum of scrum meeting and even there are further option that comes into picture now there are multiple safe there is less and there is discipline agile there are a lot of other thing that has come into picture which says that how we can scale the agile from team to organization so uh, these are the few myths which i have uh, comes around whenever uh, i go for conferences whenever we we read any agile uh, article so uh, it would be good if you know that these are the myths and how to come uh, over these myths so that you would be in a position to understand agile better thank you in this session we are going to uh, learn what is empirical and what is defined process uh, why it is necessary to learn is the uh, empirical and what is the defined process because uh, uh, there are two different mindset based on there are two philosophy that are based one is the waterfall and another one is the agile so by understanding these two processes kind of processes it will help us to understand what is the overall mindset of agile methodology so uh, if i iterate if i go further that is uh, defined and proce- defined and empirical process let's try to understand a uh, little uh, deep that what is defined and what is empirical so in traditional waterfall approach uh, uh, treat the software development as a defined process and it is assumed that everything can be known up front and that a team simply needs to execute a plan so this is what a defined process is and the scrum references an iterative four step approach to process uh, improvement sometimes referred to as a deming cycle after william edward deming the statistician and the business visionary widely created and seeding the exponential improvement in japanese manufacturing after world war 2 so what deming uh, said that there are four steps in this cycle where it is the iterative approach that is pdca that is plan do check and act so i will just go further and i will go a little deep 
into it to define that how these empirical and defined process work. So um, let's try to understand the Deming cycle. Let's try to understand that, that when you said DCA, so it is like plan, do, check, act, and plan. So this is Deming cycle, which explained that this is how we have to uh, do a empirical process. If if we uh, define it in a very uh, different way and try to understand it a little more deeper, uh, let's let's try to uh, define the empirical and the defined uh, defined and empirical process. So if I say um, this is defined and this is so this defined process is more predictive and this is more adaptive. So what is happening here? So what is happening in the defined process that it required every piece of work to be completely understood and uh, given well-defined set of input and the same output are generated every time. So a defined process can be started and allowed to run until completion with the same result every time. So a very uh, good example of uh, defined processes. So what is saying is input are clear and output is clear in simple word. So if I want to have one car to be built, I know what are the input that are required with this car, what kind of color it is going, how many tires, how many uh, doors are going to be in, uh, in, this, in this car. So that is output is well defined. So assembly line will create the similar output every time with the same input. So this is a defined process. That is the reason waterfall model is known as a defined process. But if we go in the empirical process, empirical process is exercise control through transparency, frequent inspection and adaptation for the process that are imperfectly defined or generate unpredictable and unrepeatable. So in simple word as is, it is that we have certain input but we are not sure what output we are going to generate. So what happened here is the cycle that goes on, which says that PDCA plan, do, act and check, and then define the out again and again through three pillars. So what are the three pillars of empirical process? So one is inspect, one is adapt. So the three pillars are, pillar number one is inspect, another one is adapt, and another one transparency. So, so what we happening is because output is not clear, so we are inspecting every time, we are adapting to the change and we are transparent that what we are doing so that the refined product can be formed at the end of the day. And um, if we say inspect, if we cannot inspect, we cannot adapt. So these two are related to each other. So if you inspect, you can adapt. When you're adapting, it means that you must be inspect on something. That is the reason you are in, you know, adapting to the particular things. And transparency is obviously a key for any empirical process uh, because to make the output transparent, you have to make everything transparent to everyone. So, so if, so if I say define process, the waterfall comes under this process and I can say lean, agile, or uh, agile is the overall product, lean, scrum, and Kanban come on this empirical side. So if I put an simple word again, Defined means input as clear and output is clear, but empirical means input is clear, but we are not sure that what kind of output we want to generate. So generally it comes under what is happening here is in order to clear the output, what need to be generated, we inspect and adapt and we make a transparency over the process. So what happens is that when we frequently adapting to a particular thing, we are refining our output with more transparency. So this is all about um, defined an empirical process and in the entire uh, session uh, of uh, agile project management course this is the um, thing that need to be remembered each and every time that we are working on the empirical process and because um, in every uh, most of the process which we are defining going to define further we are going to learn that inspect adapt and transparency is the key in each and every process and each and every practice Thank you.